penultimate stage of the Tour de Ski. Switzerland versus Russia versus Norway for the title this year. I think Alex Harvey at 123 behind. He might believe he's still got a chance, but I think Dario Colonia will feel that he's got enough of a lead over the great Canadian to uh, hold on to it. Bolshinov, Polterran in five and six. Holland of Norway is seven ahead of uh, Shavotkin. And they make their way out for the start of the last classic stage of the tour, Mike. Andrew Musgrave still doing really well, lying in 16th place at the end of the last stage. And Musgrave starting with bib number 16 today. Dario Colonia has his fans and they've made the long journey to Val di Fiemme to watch the number one Swiss athlete and formerly the world number one try and secure his fourth Tour de Ski title. Alex Harvey at 1 minute 23 behind needs to pick up bonus seconds in the two sprints that will take place on lap two and lap four of six laps and away they go. The waxing absolutely crucial and it's not been an easy day. Very difficult day. We saw Usberg earlier. Uh, two Norwegians. Veng was good. Her skis seemed to have grip, but Usberg didn't. So even within the same team, be it selection of skis or be it the wax, some problems will be had here. Quite a through uh, retirements from the tour over the last 48 hours. Uh, Clement Paris of France, who was lying 18th, has gone. Eric Bjornsson of USA has gone, not interested in the last two stages. Backscheider of France, Halverson of Sweden, both uh, sitting out the last two stages. And uh, Sindra Bjornstad, score of Norway, who was lying 30th, has gone. And so that uh, improves people's position. Sadly, no one in front of Andy Musgrave in the tour has retired so he stays 16th at the start of today and uh, Andy Musgrave of course who finished 18th in the tour last year would dearly love to be knocking on the door of a top 10 at the start of tomorrow very much so and uh, Muzzy Andrew Musgrave he, he lost 44 seconds in this stage last year and, and I think he's better this year, a little better, uh, especially when it comes to this mass start situation. Hopefully he can hang on in there and uh, reduce the, de the deficit. Now, last year, the Russians teamed together to help Ustia Goff through this stage, and it basically saved the day. This time round, Mike, Ustia Goff is not defending a lead. He is chasing 53 seconds, but if he watched what Heidi Feng did just uh, a couple of hours ago, then maybe he will feel he can do the same. Yes, uh, and angry, but uh, Ustikov is also angry. We saw him at the end of the race in Oberstdorf, furious that it was carnage. He didn't have the opportunity to pick up the extra points because he kept getting, uh, he f people kept falling in front of him, and there was no way around. And guess who's leading on the first of six laps? It is Sergei Ustikov of Russia setting the pace and everyone else feeling, oh my goodness, can't we have an easy day? <laughs> well, Ustikov, he, he's now buying himself self-safety because he had a bad experience in the pack and that is the safest place Andrew Musgrave did it two days ago went to the front it was safer best technician out of the leading skiers D didn't actually Dario. look at them this time but Dario was so Dario smooth Dario or Sunbi Sunbi he's, he's special he's uh, he has to alter his technique a little he's shorter stature but uh, certainly Dario's textbook beautiful I think uh, Hans Christer Holland of Norway who's got bib number seven on he's very smooth skier as indeed and Paul Turainen, of course uh, one of the best if not the best in terms of efficiency well the pace you're right it was very fast <laughs> for the first minute and a half it's backed off a little now now, if Ustikov is going to break Dario Colonia, I think the only way to do it is to use his superior sprinting speed. So keep the pace steady and but then suddenly inject some speed. And I'm wondering whether the Russians have decided to go slow, fast, slow, fast, employing uh, cycling tactics where the, 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 the race leader doesn't always lead the charge. Maybe not. I did think when we saw three of the, those uh, red suits up front, uh, maroon suits, I thought they were going to do some road blocking or... or dictation of the pace but uh, that's not happened at the moment well I think to be honest I think that's their only chance of winning the tour 
Daria Colonia tends to be a little bit quicker than Ustia Goff on the climb. Last year, the difference between them was 50 seconds, the advantage going to Dario Colonia. And that's on the uh, the big climb at the Alchemis. Harvey is there, but just behind Andrew Musgrave, who's made a good tactical move. I know we had carnage in Oberstdorf, Mike, but those who were sensible, those who were tactically astute, didn't have any problem at all. Sunbi sat in the front five all the way through the race. Andy Musgrave wheedled his way through the pack, got himself up front out of trouble. Clever racing. <laughs> It's, it's not everyone who can do that when there's 75 in the Masters, so somebody is in the middle of that park where the carnage occurred, and that happened to be Ustigov. He got it all wrong. Today he's getting it all right. No, I just thought the word Vedel, I'm not sure it exists, but I wonder whether it comes from Vedel, which is uh, the, the, those lovely sort of powder <laughs> turns that you see in, in Alpine skiing. I learn something every day. We well, haven't learned it, we've got to confirm it. <laughs> we'll check it out. So, Russia 1 and 2, and... Uh, Oh, now, damage. I thought for a moment, I thought for a moment it was the black suit of Dario Colonia. It's not. We're going to see the first four of the day. There could be a few more going down. Was, uh, was that Tom? It wasn't Thomas Bing. Was it Kuhn? I didn't, I didn't see, to be honest. I didn't get well, the I number. I it looked like bib number 12, but uh, bib number 12 is Jean-Marc Gaillard, and it certainly was not him. Look at this brutal climb. The pace, Patrick, it's so it's, it's picked up again because on lap two, there is the chance to pick up those bonus seconds, 10 bonus seconds for the top 10 through the split time. And that occurs again on lap four. And of course, 15 seconds for the person who crosses the line in first place, 10 seconds gain for the second place and five seconds for third. Back down to the stadium to complete the first of six laps. The total distance today, 15 kilometers. And it's a leg that did so much damage to some of the athletes last year. It's done a lot of damage to one in Vildersberg of Norway, who had a very comfortable lead in the tour going into the penultimate stage, and now finds herself pretty much level with Heidi Veng with one day to go. Perfect scenario, and one to be enjoyed tomorrow morning. All the cowbells have come across the border from Switzerland, and they are all hoping that Dario Colonia can uh, stay in this one. We saw it last year, Mike. Great teamwork by the Russians, nothing against it. They helped their man out, and they got Ustikov to the top of the podium in the Tour de Ski. They're trying the same again. I think so, but it was, uh, he was uh, dying on his legs. Was he was used to God last uh, year on this day, and the support his teammates helped him, shaded him, and uh, he thanked them so much afterwards because he was a man that was so tired. But in in classic, in particular, and on a course like this, which is generally steep up and steep down. The slipstream effect is minimal, but for Ustiakov just to be surrounded by his own men, the Bolshinovs and the Shavotkins, I think that's going to help him mentally. I think it absolutely is, and clearly that is a Russian plan today, and done quite rightly. They messed it up so badly two days ago. They were, they were all over the place. They were dropping like flies, broken poles, the skis coming off. They're buying themselves comfort at the front today. Now, we haven't mentioned bib number three yet, Martin Jondrat Sunby. He's uh, still looking pretty good. He's 107 off the lead of the tour. He's only, what, 14 seconds down on Ustiakov. So he must be thinking in terms of trying to get away. He must be. And you know what? Last year, remember last year, he was in third at this stage, moved up into second because he hoovered up 33 seconds gain. He had the fastest time on the track, and he picked up 18 seconds on the track. I'm getting the feeling that Ustiakov has already started his charge for those bonus seconds. He does not want to miss out on the full quota of 15 seconds. I think that's his best his best method. Take the pain if he can, and he's got himself uh, some uh, support behind yeah. him. But Colonia is wise to it. He's sitting there in third place. He's getting a little bit of help from the uh, considerable slipstream set up by Bolshinov in front of him. And Colonia... If he loses a couple of seconds, it doesn't matter, but he does not want to lose 15 seconds on one of the two sprints. And at this rate, that is not going to happen. And there they go. It's so important for Ushchikov to pick these up. Dario's trying to get some on the inside right. 
Looks as though he's going to get a few. And Poltaranin, who's one of the world's best classic skiers, is in there as well. Looks as though it's going to be 15 seconds for uh, Ustyakov. And Bolshinov does the perfect job getting between himself and the rest of the field. So Kolonia gets uh, a 2.1. We'll confirm all the bonus points in a moment. Now, I noticed last year, those who went early for the, the first of the sprints didn't last the distance so well. So on lap four last year, they didn't pick up those who went for the early ones as many the second time around. And this is the moment that those who didn't go for the sprint need to start pushing the pace to make it hurt for those who did. Ustigov 15, Kolonia 8. Seven seconds clawed back. Heading back down towards the stadium for the end of lap number two. They've got to come up this climb again, which is, could well be the key climb at the end of uh, today's race. Ustyagov has been working hard for the last five or six minutes. He secured maximum points on that first sprint. And the margin now, effectively, between Kolonia and Ustyagov is down to 46 seconds. Well, he started with a mission. Ustigov, he went, he's, he, he took all the early pace, even from the very start of the race, and he's still there now. Now, just trying to pick out any of the leaders that have dropped down the order. Shavokin is suffering a bit. Started today number eight in the tour. He's dropped down to 15th position in today's race. Kolonia positioned well. Andrew Musgrave still in this group. He didn't get any bonus seconds, Andrew Musgrave, but he's still only, what, some... 10 seconds off the lead of Sergei Ustyakov, so he's having a good run when you consider that the Classic is his least favoured of the two techniques. He, he is having a very good run. I must say, Ustyakov up that steep climb, his wax is perfect, the grip is perfect, and should last the whole 15 kilometres. Well, there you see the virtual standing. So I said 46, it's 43 because Colonia is just a few seconds behind. That's including their positions out on the track. But Colonia has now, since then, uh, drawn pretty much level with uh, Ustyagov. So it's probably 45.5 if you want to be precise. <laughs> Let's be precise. <laughs> but uh, so this is coming around to five kilometers, one third distance. Soon be looking, looking relaxed for me. I was surprised he didn't fight harder to pick up those precious seconds on the sprint. Maybe he's going for the 15 at the end. Uh, the big difference at the end is that only three get bonus seconds, 15, 10, and five. That can make a massive, massive difference. And on the last lap, Mike, if you've got a lot to give, you can open up, as we saw from Heidi Veng, you can do a lot of damage over the last two and a half K. There's Musgrave, you can, yes, when the legs are tired, and if Ustigov is not careful, he might burn himself up, as you said. He can be passed and really broken on the last lap. Now, just a little bit of a gap opening up between the leading group and Andrew Musgrave, who is uh, at the front of the second group. They could do with closing that down before they start the next climb. Alex Harvey takes up the pace at the front. Another man who will be desperate to get on the podium. Yeah, looking smooth, Alex Harvey. Just that lovely reach, sliding the foot up the hill. These hills are deceptive, Patrick. This is about 18 percent. It, it is steep, and the total climb over within this 15 kilometer, it's a massive 572 meters rise. So a lot of hard work. You do get the recoveries after each hard work section, but they're very, they're very quick. They're very fast recovery sections. Harvey lost a little bit of time on this leg last year. Dropped down to sixth position in the tour. Uh, another man we need to keep an eye on, Mike, is Maurice Magnificat of France, who generally produces the quickest time on the ascent of the Alpes Chemis. Uh, his teammate Jean-Marc Goyard wearing number 12. Uh, Magnificat in... I can't see him. Magnificat, we'll he's... We'll find uh, him soon enough. Bib he's 10. wearing Bib 10. Bib 10 in that teal suit. And... Uh, there he is. No, that's uh, that's his teammate. That's Guy R. I beg your pardon. <laughs> getting my <laughs> tens and twelves mixed up. It's interesting, isn't it? They're both very good in freestyle, not quite as good in the classic. I know they've worked on it. They've tried. 
But the Scandinavians uh, generally have been the best, the smoothest. Would you would you go for a different body type for the f uh, classic over the over the freestyle, or would you say it's all to do with heart and lungs? I think it's heart and lungs. Initially, when freestyle when skating came in, they said the the more compact, the more muscly athlete, because it's very much strength based. But as the years uh, have moved on, uh, those who are good in classic can be the best also in freestyle. Lap three. This is where the sprint will be next time round on lap number four. There's Marcus Hellner struggling just a little bit. 38 doing well. That's uh, Stanislav Volsensev of uh, Russia. He seems to have recovered a bit, as does Andrei Larkov there, number 17. Muzzy has got himself up just behind that leading group. Well, 6.1, still not half distance yet. Ushchikov just uh, playing so careful there in, well, third, fourth place. Now, this is something we've seen before. Alex Harvey, brave enough to make a break. Well, he's done the maths. They've all done the maths. They've had their meetings last night. What's our best strategy? So Alex clearly, I think, lining up already for the sprint bonus on the next lap. Yeah. If he wants to beat Sumbi in the Tour and if he wants to get himself within 45 seconds of the race leaders, then he has got to get some bonus seconds from somewhere. But as you said, you know, last year, Mike, if you expended your energy on the intermediate sprints, you had nothing to give at the end of the race. Well, that's certainly last year. Those who picked up the majority last year, they fatigued themselves for the, the latter part of this race. But when the Tour de Ski started, they'd have a 30K race and have four, five bonus sprints. Uh, that really did destroy the, the, the field. It did. Pedro Nortig was always the one who mastered the, the pacing. He'd hide in the pack, and then with that incredible sprint speed that he has, he'd come forward and then slot back in for recoveries. But I think that's where Cavalli chick was so wise she said okay i don't want to be putting in a sprint every three four kilometers i'll just go hard from the gun break away from the field and she swept the lot she did she hoovered them all up and uh, that's why she has so many titles that's Win. why she's the only person to have won the tour de ski four times man or woman but of course dario colonia is attempting to do that this year and he's in the driving seat having started today with a lead of 53 seconds he's lost seven of those seconds to ustiakov but uh, colonia has been within two meters of ustiakov all the way around <laughs> Just Harvey's keeping, still leading. Keeping an eye on him. Uh, yeah, Colonia, he's uh, into the starters today, today, having 53 seconds. That's dropped by 10. That'll be a concern for him. Alex Harvey, this is a long way out to be punching up the... opening up the pace, really taking it to a high level, stretching out everybody. 14 athletes out front before there's anything that is anywhere near a significant gap. And uh, nice to see... Francesco De Fabiani starting to make a move. He's fighting hard to stay in contention here. And the Italian fans need to have something to cheer about. Pellegrino has gone, of course, the specialist sprinter. I guess we'll see him in the next round of the World Cup next weekend. The final sprint before the Olympic Games. Mike, with Oberstdorf sprint being cancelled, do you think we'll see more of the big names heading towards next weekend? I think we might well do. Uh, the, the sprinters who missed out uh, in Oberstdorf, of course, they'd planned that anyway for the Panizia sprint races. And uh, Nortug, uh, he will be back. It'll be so interesting to see how he matches up. Klebo will be there as well. So, this is the longest recovery section. You get a good recovery here, fill the lungs, get the lactic levels down. That's the disadvantage for Alex at the front. The others can slipstream a little. But Alex Skies didn't look so fast there. I know the others were slipstreaming. He's got great grip on the up, less good glide on the down. Holter on in looking very comfortable in six with the uh, luminous yellow flashes down the bottom of his suit. And, of course, Polteranin racing for Kazakhstan, which is where the great Vladimir Shmirnov came from. What a record he had. 
Rickardson for Sweden in eighth place at the moment. But the Swedes will not be too fussed about the Tour de Ski. It is all about the Olympic Games for them. And uh, after their success in the relay in Sochi, uh, don't rule them out of success in any event. That is so true. Good to see bib number nine, the only German in the top, uh, in the top 30, actually. Uh, Thomas Bing doing well. In fact, there's Dobler just moving up into, in today's race, up into 30th position. Yeah, Thomas Bing looking very strong indeed. Big day for him. Welcome back to Valdifiemi. And Ustiakov, uh, well, apologies, slightly uh, poor timing on the break, has picked up another 15 points in, or 15 bonus seconds for the second sprint on lap number two. And uh, has he taken another seven out of uh, Dario Colonia? So the margin is coming down and that builds for a fabulous climax tomorrow. But we wait and see what happens at the end of this race because I think there are gonna be a few seconds won and lost over the last two and a half kilometers. Now it's about endurance, it's 8.6 kilometers gone uh, and the change of pace there from Ushchikov to pick up those two sets of 15 seconds. It's expensive, it catches you up later. Or it can do. Yeah, have a look at Ustyakov's technique. Still looking strong at the moment, he's on the left of your picture, a little slip, that won't help. There's Sunbi, who's been controlled throughout, only 4.4 behind in terms of the uh, race today. Larkoff at 4.9, Tunseth, De Fabiani are in there. Holland, I thought we might see him make a move, Mike, because he's been outstanding this year. Seventh in the Tour at the start of today. If he can gain 10 seconds, he moves up into the top five. And the giant 13, Iverson, this doesn't really suit him, the total climb here is brutal at, uh, well, 575 metres, not his type of course. Well, I think uh, Polteranin thinking along exactly the same lines as you, Mike. If you go for all the sprints, you pay a price. Polteranin's decided to go for it. Colonia's gone with him. Harvey's stuck with him. Very different story for Alex Harvey, who lost a lot of ground on this leg last year. He certainly did, and it was in the latter stages he lost it last year, but now they're trying to hurt Ushchikov, knowing full well that he's, he's really taken himself up to the high lactic in the sprints. 39.5 the margin having started at 53 at the beginning of the day but if Ustiakov can't live with this pace but be before you start thinking he's had it uh, you have to remember last year where he was a long way adrift of the race leaders and his teammates pulled him back to the front I think that's maybe what's going to happen now he needs uh, probably needs some support although Bolshinov is ahead of him and uh, could maybe assist yeah and I think that's there. Larkov, is it? Yes, 17, running alongside, team orders. Keep him company, keep Ustigov company. Give him some positives. Ustigov, of course, in the black and white bib. Number 12, that was uh, Jean-Marc Gaillard, still looking for Maurice Magnifica. I don't know if we can pick up. Last time I saw he was down 25, 26. Yes, yeah, still thereabouts, Patrick. 26, Magnifica and uh, Andrew Musgrave just ahead of him. So often they race side by side. Yeah, so very evenly matched in the classic and in the freestyle, although Magnifica just that little bit quicker on the freestyle races. Muzzy 34.7 behind the lead time and Magnifica 36.1. If yeah, Muggsgrave could stay in the top 20 today, he's certainly got a chance of uh, bettering his 18th position in the Tour de Ski last year. And incidentally, Mike, last year at the end of the Tour, or at the end of Stage 6, Musgrave was 5 minutes 21 off the leaders, and he started today only 2 minutes 42. It's pretty good. It's pr pretty good. The big distance races, of course, have been taken out this year, the 20 yeah. kilometers, but um, it's, it's still excellent racing. I, th I think it's made for a more exciting tour, to be honest. I think so. Those big days, they can shift the, the, the standings by so much if you have a bad day. And, I, and I'm not sure it's not time to add another sprint but reduce the bonuses that you get for the for winning the sprint. Maybe to bring the bonus from 60 seconds back down to 30. Yes, sir, I think so. I think this is Ushigov now going through the most critical part of the Tour de Ski this season or this year, and he's suffering from here on in for me with the last five kilometers to go. 
Yeah, he's now some way behind, put in so much effort for those bonus sprints. Alex Harvey, sensible approach to getting some bonus seconds, Mike. Start your charge a good two, three kilometers out, uh, rather than putting in a lactate building 200 meter burst. Incredible. And uh, Daria Colonia, that, that methodical thinking of his, the precision of Swiss clocks, he's just there. He's not doing anything crazy, but he's at the sharp end. But this is, uh, this for me, is Ustikov looking very, very tired if body language uh, speaks a lot often. But if one man can recover on a 30-second downhill, it is him. And that means that Polteranin and Kolonia have to keep the pressure up. And with Polteranin looking over his shoulder, he's looking for someone to come and take the work. Then he needs a bit of pace cheer up the front. Uh, you just expect that Dario doesn't want to over-fatigue. Yes, it's a fast pace. This is hurting. Well, wow. this is hurting, and he's going to lose more than the 15 seconds that he gained from uh, those phenomenal sprints we've seen. Of course, uh, Ustikov picking up 15 seconds, maximum bonus seconds on the two intermediate sprints. Now, I wonder if team orders from Russia, will it be that uh, Larkov and uh, Bolshinov go back and assist uh, Ustikov? I doubt it now. Now, I know you've done a bit of adventure racing, and in those uh, sports, you have a little elastic wire that you attach to the weakest team member. Uh, it only needs to do maybe half a percent, but it makes all the difference. <laughs> or just someone beside you uh, when you're going through a world of pain is, is, is helpful as well. Polteranin, Kolonia, Harvey, Bolshinov. In fact, uh, Larkov. that's Larkov in, in four. Bolshinov just behind him. 23% uh, steepness this climb. It doesn't look it doesn't look it from here, but it's a horrible hill. Danny Rickardson is there, and Sunbi Mike in a dangerous position, some 25 meters off the leaders. I know he's ahead of Ustiakov, and uh, that could give him a chance of finishing second in the tour. But uh, Sunbi really needs to be with these leading four and playing a part in the chase for the finish. 28-16 on the clock at the moment. And, uh, well, that was interesting, Polter Ryan and saying to those around him, someone help me here, someone take the lead if we're going to keep this pace strong. What about the psychology of Sumbi? He won this race last year, he led it through the sprints, uh, sorry, first and second through the sprints. He's not the same person as he was last year, it must be hurting him psychologically. And some will say that is all to do with the Salbutamol, but athletes have good seasons and bad seasons. Sumbi at his best, my goodness, could destroy a field without any trouble at all. Dario Colonia could do exactly the same, and there he is, being very smart today. Hasn't overextended himself, he'll be delighted uh, to see that Ustiakov is suffering a little, and he had a good long look over his shoulder. Now he gets some help from the Swiss team to tell him exactly where he stands, and well, I think they're probably saying, capitalise, capitalise on the move. Did you see his pace pick up there? He took that long look over his shoulder, and then he dug a little deeper. He's going to try and smash the pace now. Under 40 seconds between the two leaders in the tour. But there is uh, Ustigov, and he's still got another 60 meters of climbing to go before the clock will stop with him. Sunbi on 12 seconds. Now, Sunbi started today only 14 seconds behind Ustigov. Ustigov, of course, has picked up bonus seconds, but the difference uh, between them, some. What is it? 12 seconds exactly. So that's going to be another tight little battle that will play out on the Alp Chamis tomorrow. I said earlier, Patrick, that Ustigov skis were great in terms of grip, but looking at him now, as the wax come off, he's not, uh, it's not working as well as it was three laps ago at all. Yeah, we always talk about wax, Mike, but the, the athletes not only have to choose the wax and the base, they also have to choose the ski and the stiffness. And I'm just wondering whether a stiff ski is fine at the start when you're strong. As you get tired on a course like this, you just don't have the power to compress it. So it may not be the wax at all. It may be the fact that you just can't compress the ski enough to get the grip that, and maybe yeah maybe and because the stiff ski yes there's advantage because it lifts the wax way off the ice or the tracks and allows you to to glide faster but it's a lot of energy it's a lot more energy that you have to press down with Alex Harvey at 123 behind 
he will be enjoying the fact that Sunbi hasn't been able to live with the pace. Sunbi now 45 metres off uh, Alex Harvey's lead and uh, bounding up the hill, he's trying to make sure that the wax grips. That often happens if you keep the ski off the ground until the second before you put it down, you get a slightly better grip than you do than if you slide the ski forward. Yes, very much so. Bolshinov there for me is beginning to run out of steam. Larkov, though, it must, must have been given orders to stay at the top, win this one, to prevent the others getting the 15 seconds bonus. Otherwise, I thought Larkov might have dropped back to assist Ustikov, but think, he's up at the sharp end. I think I think Sumbi gets the goldfish bowl prize, <laughs> which is the man who gapes the most <laughs> when he's breathing. And he's... Uh, you only see it when he's right on his limit, but at the moment, he is there. Watch him on the next uphill climb. He's trying to suck in this thinner air. It's only 700 metres altitude here, but it's a little thinner, and he's trying to drag it all in. Leading group of four, and just behind them... Uh, Good run from Didrik Tunseth of Norway, who's joined the leaders. That's going to help his position. He started today 4.41, so today is all about getting the win for Tunseth, and he's in a position to challenge for that. Bolshinov, unable to affect the leading five. I wonder whether he's trying to get up with the leaders and then slow the pace down to let Ustikov come back to them. But he's got to get in front of the likes of Harvey and Kolonia if he's going to do that. He has to. He absolutely has to. Much better day for uh, Sweden. Rickardson looking good there and just in behind Bolshinov. Larkov might be trying to uh, slow things down. He's moved himself up in a second place. Polteranin having nothing to do with it. All the while, Ushchikov, uh, it's not great news. He's 28 seconds now adrift and that's, uh, well, that's 28 actually behind Kolonia, who's in fourth, but 0.8 behind the leader. Thirty-three oh seven on the clock. They're on the final lap now here in Val di Fiemme. Just one more stage of the Tour de Ski to go, and that, of course, is taking place tomorrow. Both men and women racing over nine kilometres, and the only time they race over the same distance is in the sprint races. Quite amazing. Look at the clock as well, Patrick. This is it's not been a slow race. We're nearly on 34 minutes, and these 15-kilometer classics on easier courses are completed often in 35, 35 and a half minutes. Steep climb about to come, and this is where Dario Colonia pushed the accelerator last time around. It's a difficult one, Mike. If it was just about today, I think we'd see Colonia make a break at this stage. But he's also got to think about conserving energy for tomorrow. Well, you're talking about the, <laughs> the goldfish bowl, but Colonia's now gasping for air like uh, like he really, really has never gasped before. And, and of course, they're, they're sucking in up to 200 litres of air every minute. Huge capacity going through the lungs. Yeah, make that 300 if you're the size of Danny Rickardson. <laughs> he's a huge <laughs> man out there. The best of the Swedes at the moment. Marcus Helner seemed to be struggling a little earlier on well wow, where's your money Polteranin I think he he just loves classic style I don't know what it is about him generally they think that your vo2 your, your cardiovascular capacity has to be greater for classic and I know well I know that from when he was younger they never prepared skating tracks they didn't have the facility to prepare so in his earlier days he liked he got into classic more than he did into freestyle so from a very young age, but very efficient. And he keeps his body weight very level. His centre of gravity doesn't go up quite as much as we see from Harvey. Norwegians tend to have a little bit of up and down movement as well. Sumbi in the background struggling at the moment. Polteran is starting to make a move. And Harvey matches that. Colonia still looking ominously comfortable. Good battle going on between De Fabiani of Italy and Martin Jonsrud Sumbi. Here he is. And he's still trying to suck that air into the lungs just to give him a chance of getting up with the leaders but it does not look as though that's going to happen this is a brutal course and uh, when tomorrow we said earlier 4.5 kilometers gently down and flat terrain then a brutal continuous climb for 425 meters rise altitude rise over what five and a half k's this could be a tall winning performance from Dario Colonia he lost some 14 seconds in the bonus sprints to Ustiagov, but if he wins the race, he'll pick up 15 bonus seconds because Ustiagov is not going to make the top three today. Ustiagov, I'm impressed. He's still surviving. It was 28 seconds. He's 32 behind now, and he's only what? Uh, well, Sumbi was 20 seconds behind. 
And if that happens, Mike, the margin at the start of tomorrow is going to be something like 1 minute 20. It may be even more than that. And uh, it takes a, a big performance to take that sort of margin off Dario Colonia on the Alchemise. First little slip, but uh, he's not the only one to struggle with the skis. Bolshinov has been so close for so long. What a performance from the under-23 uh, athlete from Russia. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do later this season. I suspect we're going to see a big dip at some stage. It's amazing, and his birthday was only, what, last Sunday? Last month, last Sunday. 21st hey, birthday. 21st birthday. Yep. And I'm just thinking, Dario, lining up now is looking good for him for his fourth win in Tour de Ski. Do you think half of Switzerland will come across the border tonight to watch him tomorrow? Well, I hope so. Certainly be worth it. Just a little bit of a shame that uh, Jons Rutsumbi isn't a bit closer in his bid to get three. Sumbi would, of course, be the only man to win his third Tour de Ski twice because he had one title taken away to, from him uh, when that scandal about the salbutamol, the asthma treatment, came out. That title, of course, ended up going to Petter Nortuk, who never thought he'd win a Tour de Ski, but he didn't exactly do it the way he wanted. Some 600 metres to go. One brutal climb remains and a fast downhill into the stadium. It's Dario Colonia leading in the black suit. Alex Harvey for Canada in the red. And just behind them, the classic specialist, specialist Polteranin, and then Larkov, the best of the Russians today, who's limp with the pace and he's now struggling to stay in the top three. What a pace. Bolshinov further back down the track. Uh, this is brutal. Polteranin's got on the inside and he was always going to get closed out by Colonia because at some stage you have to move out of the tracks and perhaps uh, Polteranin should have got on the outside of the track but he's still there, he's still got a chance. Now we're going to see who's got the best pair of skis. All the hard work has done. It's now a tactical battle as they head for the finish. Larkov got it all wrong. He had the chance to move into first. He went way too wide. He's at the back now and it's tough to get through to the front. I still fancy Alex Harvey, Mike. He's in third place. He's going to Good, get a good slingshot as he comes under the banner and into the stadium and Alex Harvey of the uh, leading four is certainly the best sprinter 130 meters to go the 50 kilometer world champion in red may fancy his chances here because he's got a brutal sprint when he applies it but it's Pulteranin who finds the best cadence he's the man pulling away and Kazakhstan look as though they're going to get the win with Russia second Canada third and Dario Colonia missing out on those bonus seconds that would have been so so important well Larkov just managed to get in there to close out uh, to close out that opportunity for Colonia Colonia will be so disappointed finishing yep. fourth could have had 15 bonus seconds he ends up with none and that is a little bit of a reprieve for Sergei Ustiagov Rickardson a good sixth place De Fabiani lived with the pain all the way through seventh for him ahead of Holland who started the tour in seventh I don't think he's going to lose a place in the tour Tunseth might right up with a leading five with just 2.5 to go but couldn't stay with a brutal pace on that last lap and Sumbi losing 28.9 to Darren Colonia, he's not going to challenge for the win, and I think with Ustia Goff across in 42 seconds, I think uh, Sumbi's going to struggle to challenge for second as well. Well, do you know what? When you're a sprinter, and, and you're, well, he's a distance athlete as well, but those precious, the, the, the sort of attraction of those early special points, they really spoiled the tail end of the race for Ustia Goff. He burnt out. And what, 40 seconds behind at the end there, Ustigov, 42 maybe. But did Ustigov have an option? Starting the day, 53 seconds down, he had to try and get, he was really going for 45 bonus seconds, plus whatever he could put on Dario Colonia. But that's maybe getting a little bit greedy. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> and it, you just look back and you think, well, I know they complained that they should never have had a mass start on uh, that day in, uh, in Oberstdorf. Magnificat 135 down, Musgrave down in 27th position, another 140, he started today at 
2.42, so that's 4.22 odd that he's behind and puts him uh, still a minute closer to the leaders than he was at this stage last year. But we've done, uh, what, 10 less kilometers already on the tour and, of course, missed out on one of the sprints as well. So a similar performance to last year, but I was really encouraged by Musgrave skiing in that last 15 kilometer freestyle, Mike, tactically astute, very brave on the sprints, and he stuck it out to the end. He did, and uh, tomorrow Muzzy will, it's the freestyle, it's a steep climb, it's about hard work, and Muzzy is a hard worker. Paul Talat, Paul Tarainen, we mustn't forget him, he's really done his course from sixth, and what, one minute 35 behind, he's a contender for tomorrow, possibly. Yeah, and, and a much better freestyle skier than he's been in the past, but... He's so big though, isn't he? he? I mean, can, <laughs> he cope, he's... can he cope with the Alp Jamis? It's all about power to weight ratio, and... Uh, Polterani, well, he's, he's not got a lot of bulk on him. Most of these men with a body mass index between 7 and 10. A popular winner, Polterani. And I think uh, most of the tour happy to see him out front. 38.40, cracking time on a course like this. Bing of Germany, who was right up there early on, ends up 252 behind but Dario Colonia has done his chances of winning the tour no harm at all with a fourth place finish today well ahead of Ustiagov Bertolina wearing 44 after three laps you could have thrown a blanket over the whole field, but after six, they are well, well spread. That just tells you how painful the pace was. And really, that second sprint was crucial, wasn't it, Mike? We were suggesting that Colonia and Harvey should keep the pressure on after Ustiagov went for the full bonus points. That's exactly what they did. They hurt right, him, they hurt uh, him as soon as he... Congrats yeah, on your first win, and we were just chatting, your first win in two seasons. Uh, yeah, now you've moved into second place in the overall in the tour standings. It's a great day for you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I was not uh, so high in Tour de Ski. Second place is a new record for me. <laughs> and of course, I'm really happy. Today, I, I win again. And uh, really smart skiing at the end. You had, you had fast skis. And uh, you had great position coming into the final corner. Did you want to? Is where you wanted to be to start to come to the stadium? <laughs> okay, we'll just say congratulations on a nice win. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think Jeff was a bit quick there. <laughs> Well, this, this is the stage of the race that he was talking about as they came down into the stadium. Uh, Paul Tarnin took the lead early, which, in, you know, on a long downhill like this is unusual. Well, and Dario, for me, was too nice there. He was too gentle. You have to be aggressive. Yes, you've got to respect the rules, but I think he was too gentlemanly coming around that corner when it's so important to have picked up bonus points. My goodness, you can't win. <laughs> As soon as you get aggressive, they're getting a hard time for being too aggressive. But uh, as it is, he was very gentlemanly there, I thought. <laughs> Great win from Paul Taranin. I must say, I didn't expect him to see, see him win a sprint against uh, Alex Harvey, but I think Alex has had to work pretty hard today. And a popular win indeed for Paul Taranin. And take nothing away from Larkov, Mike. He stuck it out. So yeah. there are the final results. Polterad in ahead of Larkov. Alex Harvey, the 50-kilometer world champion in third. Dario Colonia, three-time Tour de Ski winner in four, and still the leader here in Val de Fiemme. He will sleep easy tonight with Sergei Ustyagov down in 14th place, 42.8 seconds given away. And uh, we're still waiting for the calculation, but it's going to be around 135, something like that. What's your prediction? Well, Paul Torain, and I'm trying to do the math here as quick as I can, or just trying to, the, the bonus seconds, of course, which, which Ustyagov hoovered up most of them. So he got 30 second bonus there but I'm trying to calculate in relation to Dario, where Dario got picked up, how many points he picked up, and I think it was 19 or 20. We'll have to wait and see, it's coming up soon. Of course, because Colonia got no bonus seconds on that, uh, the on end. the finish position. Yep. So uh, that means that the margin, instead of being 120, two, uh, what is it, 120, 220, 120, 
uh, may be down at around one, uh, 110, one, 105, 110. And of course, Paul Ryan picked up a lot of the bonus sprint seconds as well. And that's for Jeff, uh, Jeff's calculations. Well, well here, here we go. We're going to find out. Colonia at 220.37.7 is 114 ahead of Paul Turanin. He's 121 ahead of Dario Colonia. And Alex Harvey is not out of contention for a top three. Andrew Musgrave still in the top 20. He lies 18th, but the margins are quite big to improve on last year's position where he finished 18th. He went from 14th to 18th on the Alchemies last year. So he's got to hope for a better climb uh, to better last year's performance. Dario Colonia set to win it, Mike? I think so. When you've got a 121 lead, and it's Paul Ryan and bless him, he's not the fastest on that climb. And of course, uh, with the Ustikov back there as well, but 130 behind. Uh, Potter on in at 115, so, Ustikov at 121. 121. So I think his main attack will be from Ustikov, but at 121, that's a very safe distance with the form that Dario has right now. And Harvey, just a little bit of drift. Sorry, we flicked through that so fast. You have a chance to see the top and the bottom and not a lot of what's in the middle. But uh, we do know the tour leader is Dario Colonna. He's over a minute clear. He'll be 450 metres down the track before uh, anyone else gets to start. Just Overall lead in the World Cup standings. Clebo is still there, which is astonishing, but things will change when they hand out all the bonuses Just for the final position. Briefly, Patrick, of course, uh, Ustigov won. That was the fastest up the Alpes yet uh, last year by one minute, two seconds, but 119 faster than... Dario. Well, that's the, that's the finishing that time. Finishing he was actually time. 20th in terms oh. of the climb up the steep section. Well, Alex Harvey uh, in third place today has moved up to, uh, well, he stayed in fourth place, but he's closed the gap between himself and second and third. He's still too far behind Colonia to challenge. But uh, what a day, what a great race. And we'll look forward to the finale tomorrow, the last day of the Tour de Ski. Ski jumping is coming up next. David Goldstrom very excited about the final stage of the Four Hills with Camel Stock in a position to make it four wins out of four. No one's done that uh, except for Sven Hannevold. So a little bit of history could be in the making this afternoon at Bischoshofen. No history made here today in Val di Fiemme. But if Dario Colonia wins tomorrow, he will be the only man, well, he's the only man to have won the Tour three times. He could be the only man to have won it four. And then he'll draw level with uh, Kowalczyk of Poland, who's won the Women's Tour on four occasions. So the scene is now set, Mike. Uh, you're going to predict the men and a women's uh, winner for the Tour de Ski? Yeah, I think we've got to yeah, go with Colonia in the men's field and Veng for me in the in the women's field now. Veng, who had a tremendous day, pulling back all the 57 seconds that she was behind Usberg. Usberg needs a good sleep and a pep talk <laughs> to see if she can challenge. Should be a fantastic climax. Hope you can join Mike and myself tomorrow for the last day of the Tour de Ski.